For those of you who don't know, bridging is a term that we use when our youth move into young adulthood. It happens normally in the 17th or 18th year, and it happens when people move on from the youth program into young adult programs. There are three youth being recognized as our bridgers today, two of whom are in the sanctuary, and one will join us shortly after that. Who are the two youth who are here who are bridging? Are you here? I'm going to ask that you come up front and sit in these chairs right there, right there. Come sit in these chairs. Both of you? Yes, both of you. We know how much teenagers like to be, you know, embarrassed, so please sit right there. Excellent. Because I wrote this for you. They just get to listen. For years, I used to do a variation on the same bridging sermon. Year after year, I thought the congregation probably won't remember it if I change it up a little bit. And of course, I was guessing that the youth who may have seen it in the previous year probably won't remember it either. I thought it was pretty good, and for a time it was pretty appropriate. But this year, as I thought about what I was going to say, I thought, how in the pardon the expression hell am I going to talk to youth moving into young adulthood in the middle of all of this? I mean, in high school, we didn't have to wear masks, although with the amount that some of us showered, it might have been a good idea. In high school, we occasionally protested the government, but we didn't try to rip it to shreds. In high school in the 70s, I know I don't look that old, please don't say anything, there certainly was racial injustice and to maybe no one's surprise, there still are horrible acts of white supremacy. In high school, in fact, in my freshman year of high school, Roe versus Wade became the law of the land. And now, well, if you've seen the news at all, we are at another inflection point for next year's high school freshmen. With all of this, I know I and so many others think it's maybe too much. What in the world can any of us possibly do? How can we make a difference? Sometimes we think we just can't. Well, I have a pretty simple message for today. Let us not focus on what we can't do, but let us put all of our energy behind what we can. Personally, I have been amazed at what can go viral in this world, whether it be a teenage Swedish climate activist or survivors of tragic events motivating hundreds of thousands of people to march all over the world. There are amazing vehicles in today's world for random acts of love and caring and kindness to ripple forth in ways that they never could have when I was moving into young adulthood. The thing that does remain the same, however, is having the thought that one person can make a difference. And in fact, that's the only thing that ever has. That one individual who believes that they can do something can make this world a better place. And it doesn't have to go viral. It actually doesn't have to be anything more than doing something to make a difference, to make this world a better place through one simple, thoughtful gesture. And then maybe one more. It's hard to know how they add up. And it really doesn't or shouldn't matter because, and here's the catch, if you cut through all the rhetoric or all the discussions or all of the committee meetings, what I'm talking about is the actual practice of living Unitarian Universalism and its core concepts. We Unitarian Universalists have so many discussions. We use so many words. I am certainly an example of using a lot of words. Blah, 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 blah. 
But here's what I ask for you as you bridge from youth into the independence of young adulthood. Every once in a while, try to minimize the noise of the chaos of the troubling and beautiful broken world and listen to what your heart is telling you. What you may have learned here in this inherently flawed and wonderful congregation. Listen for that still small voice that lives inside all of us and that craves for love to be made real in this world. For people not to have to live in fear because of who they are or whom they love. For justice and equality to be recognized not just by other people, but by the systems in which we live. For all of us to find a way to live, if not in agreement, at least not in harm, for it is those on the margins who are frequently, frequently harmed the most. This is what I ask of you as you bridge today, from youth to young adulthood, behind the lessons and the pizza parties, beyond the classes and all the discussions is one simple fact. You can make a difference. It is a message for all of us at this weird and challenging time in our history. It's not about what we can't do. It's about what we can. And for those of you who are now moving out of this youth program into whatever comes next, please remember, if you need help, if you need love, if you need support, this congregation has pledged to do all that. And as long as we are here, you are too, whether physically or not. There is no clear roadmap from this point forward. There are always possibilities and choices to make. I continue to hope that you will make choices grounded in this faith and in doing what you can to live it in a way that contributes to the world in ways of love and joy and equity and kindness and justice. The world needs it and it needs you. Amen.